What do you notice about the squirrel's body? What do you notice about the squirrel's environment? What do you notice about how the squirrels move now? What do you notice about the squirrel's new environment? What do you notice about how the squirrels get food? What do you notice about how the squirrels interact over the food? Good morning, my environmental detective friends. Looking forward to doing some new investigations and detective work with you. Let's go find clues right here in our own neighborhood environment. Thank you, Duke. It's great to see you again. Welcome, my environmental detective friends. It's sunshine here, and I'm really excited because today we are at Wild Care. Do you remember those squirrels that we've been watching and all the questions that we've had about how do we know when we release them? Well, today we're gonna go on a field exploration at Wild Care with the communications director, Allison, who is going to be sharing with us all these things that we've had questions about. So here we are, get your notebooks ready, and we'll find out more. Hi everybody, I'm so excited to have the opportunity to talk to you about the squirrels that we care for at Wild Care. In our wildlife hospital, we admit as many as 4,000 injured and orphaned animals every single year to take care of them and then release them back to the wild. And about 200 of those often are squirrels in one single year. So these baby squirrels came in, one of them was caught by a dog and I think the other one fell from his nest and landed on his head, which happens a lot. And when they were in care in the wildlife hospital, we had to take care of their injuries. You notice the one has the leg in a cast, and that is because he did have an injured leg, so we had to treat that. They're given a formula that's specific for baby squirrels and only for baby squirrels, and as they grow up, we feed them less and less of the formula and more and more of the foods that they would find in the wild, like acorns and nuts and fruits and berries and all of those different things that they'll be eating as adult squirrels. As they get get older as they get older, we transition them from a small kennel into a larger wire cage and then ultimately into the outdoor enclosure where they can learn how to run around, climb and play and do all of the things that an adult squirrel needs to do in order to navigate his treetop habitat. So we watch them as they grow up and once they're in that outdoor cage, it's usually for two or three weeks that they're outdoors and we make sure that they are able to crack nuts with their teeth that's one of the first tests. We have to know that their teeth are in great shape and that they can crack nuts. We, can all, we always want to make sure that they can run and climb and be perfectly healthy, healthy doing that. And the other thing we want to see them doing before we release them is making a nest in the nest box that we give them. And once they do all of those things, we know that they're ready to return the, to the wild and they'll be very successful once they've been released. Hi, Dragonfly! Hola, sunshine! Sol, sol brillante, ¿cómo estás? Bien, I'm doing really good. Let's do some sevens. Would you like to do that? Oh, sí, yo quiero practicar los siete. Hace días que no los practico. Okay. Okay. Well, let's channel our Walker Creek and let's do our sevens. We're going to do it twice each time. The first time in English, the second time in... Español. All right, está bien. Let's do this. 
Ready, begin. One, two, two three, four, four, five, six, seven. seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Okay. One, One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Wow. One, two, three. Oh, I forgot a part. Okay. Let's start it again. Ready? Okay. From the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do it again. One, two, three, three four, four, five, six. Oh seven. my God. Uno, no puedo. Tres, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. One, One two, two, three, three four, five, five six, six, seven. Uno, Uno dos, dos, tres, cuatro, cuatro cinco, cinco, seis, siete. siete. Uh. One, One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven. seven. Uno, One, dos, dos Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Oh, eso es un reto muy grande para mí. Oh, I can do that over and over. Oh, ok. Espero que ustedes lo puedan hacer bien en sus casas. Practiquen, amiguitos, ok? Mucho práctico. Uh -huh. Hi, friends. Welcome back. It's me, Miss French. We've been working all week on building our sentence patterning chart with our five parts of speech that help us to really describe those squirrels that we've been observing in those cages at Wild Care. Now, we've got these beautiful sentences we've made up, but I'm feeling a little bit sad because I'm kind of bored with this. I think we should do something a little bit more exciting, like let's write a poem, shall we? Over here, I've got our poetry frame, and what we're going to do, friends, is we're going to take our parts of speech that we've already generated here, and we're going to plug it right into our template. And the reason that we're doing this is so after, you can look out your window, and you could write the name of a different animal you see, and you could make your own sentence patterning chart, and then you could write your own hear their poem. So let's take a quick review of our parts of speech before we plug them into our poem. These are all of our adjectives, our describing words. We had for the squirrels, furry, say it with me, gray, curious, injured, playful, hungry, our noun is squirrels. These were all of the actions uh-oh, we need our past tense verbs. These are our present tense verbs. Where did our past tense verbs go? They're over here. Thank goodness I remember that I still have them. Because what we observed already happened in the past. We saw the squirrels in the past. Squirrels climbed, say it with me. Squirrels explored. Squirrels nibbled in the video. Squirrels darted. Squirrels drank and squirrels jumped. These were the words that described how the squirrels did the actions. How we, we look, they climbed, they did it really good, but we don't say good, we said they climbed well, they explored quickly, they nibbled slowly, and they darted cautiously. Then these were our phrases that told us where or when the squirrels were. In a cage, under a branch, near some leaves, on a blanket, at wild care, over the food dish. So we're gonna take our parts of speech now and we're gonna make the craziest, most amazing hear their poem. 
The title of our poem, of course, is our topic, squirrels. Say it with me, squirrels. It goes like this, squirrels here, there. And look who the authors are by San Rafael City School scholars. That's you because you wrote this poem based on your observations. The beginning goes like this, squirrels here, squirrels there. Squirrels, squirrels everywhere. And now we've got all these blank spots, but this is easy because we're just gonna take an adjective and plug it right in here. The first one is furry. Say it and do it, furry. Squirrels. What did they do because it already happened? Climbed. Well, and I'll do a thumbs up and a smiley face. We'll take our next adjective. What color were they? Gray. Say it and do it. Gray. Squirrels. What's the sign language? Squirrels. What did they do? Explored. How did they explore? Quickly. There's that suffix ly. What's our next adjective? Curious. That means they liked to look everywhere and learn new things, just like you do. Squirrels, that's our noun, our topic. What did they do? Nibbled. That's when you take little teeny tiny bites. And how did they do it? They nibbled like a turtle, slowly. There's our suffix ly again. And Hmm, at the end, they weren't injured. I'm gonna skip that one, because I like this one, and this one's got a cool suffix. You might notice there's a lot of words that end with full, like play full, color full, beauta full. When you hear a word that ends with full, it's probably an adjective, a describing word. I'm gonna use and playful, squirrels, Mm, darted, that's when you move really quickly. They darted, and they were kind of getting to know each other at the end, cautiously, because they weren't really sure what the other one was gonna do. Now I'm gonna look at my new pattern. Now I'm not starting with an adjective, I'm not starting with a describing word, I'm gonna start with our noun. Our noun is our topic or our main idea, squirrels. Squirrels. And I'm gonna to go to my next part of speech, which is my prepositional phrase. It tells me the location where the squirrels were at. The squirrels were in a cage. Here's my sketch. Squirrels were under a branch. Say it and do it. Under a branch. They were at wild care. Remember, that's a location you can visit when we're done with our shelter in place. And squirrels were also, huh, at the end especially, over the food dish. I don't know about you, but it looked like those squirrels were starting to wrestle with each other. Now we've got our poem with all of our parts of speech that we just took from our sentence patterning chart and plugged in to our frame. Now we're gonna sing it together and gesture it, and you're gonna help me, and then you're gonna write your own. Here we go, friends. Squirrels Here, There by SRCS Scholars. Squirrels here, squirrels there. Squirrels, squirrels everywhere. Furry squirrels climbed well. Gray squirrels explored quickly. Curious squirrels nibbled slowly, and playful squirrels darted cautiously. Squirrels 
in a cage, squirrels under a branch, squirrels at wild care, and squirrels over the food dish. Sing it with me. Squirrels here, squirrels there. Squirrels, squirrels everywhere. Squirrels, squirrels, squirrels. Thanks, friends. Thank you, Miss French. So do you remember our squirrel that we saw with the, with the cast on her leg? Well, she's about to be released. So let's make a point. Let's watch our squirrel and really observe how she moves. Here she is. Oh, gone. There she goes. Right back to the scene of the crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was incredible. Did you see how she moved? Did you see how she darted so quickly? Oh, my gosh. I got to see that again. Let's watch her one more time. Welcome home. <laughs> oh, gone. There she goes. Right back to the scene of the crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you get those ideas down in your notebook? Tell me, what did you notice? You also saw the darting, and it was so quickly. What else did you observe? Yeah, so fast out of that cage. It makes me so excited to go to my sit spot and think about these trees and how that squirrel is going to make its way to the trees. Let's go. This looks like the perfect sit spot for this area. I've got these two trees. I have a nice place where I can sit down. So I'm gonna start my sit spot by remembering to take my deep breaths and to get myself calm. Think about my feelings. Look at the feeling tree. Make sure that I'm feeling okay and in a space where I'm ready to observe the world around me. I've got my notebook and now I'm just gonna look. I'm gonna look around me and I'm gonna start to make sense of what I'm seeing. And I'm gonna start by looking up. And when I look above me, I see this branch. Are you seeing the branch? And as I sketch my branch, first, I wonder if this is a branch our squirrel would want to be on. And then I start noticing on the branch these other branches with all these leaves. Do you see them? And I wonder how many leaves are on this branch that our squirrel will need to jump and run around on oh so quickly. I could count them. I could see one area and I can count them. Three, four, five, six. And then I can start to wonder if there's six on the end. Does that mean that there's six on the rest of the ends? So could I start to make an estimate and wonder like if I just keep counting by sixes, will I then find out how many leaves are there? That's a lot of counting that I get to do. Or I can even count it by how many I see on one spot and apply that. I wonder if scientists do that, if that's a way that helps them to understand it. I'm also noticing the way the light is going through the leaves. One leaf looks darker, the other leaf looks lighter. It makes me have to be careful when I'm counting because sometimes the leaves hide under each other. So I'm noticing when I do that in my notebook, I'm going to draw my leaf that looks darker. I'm going to shade it. And then when I do my leaf that's lighter, I'm gonna make a note to myself that that was brighter. And my question is, is the sun hitting it in a different way? Remember, I'm sunshine. I'm always looking for the sun. 
So now that I look up and I see, wonder if this is where my school goes, it makes me go down because there's all these different shades of green below me here. And I'm seeing what we often call like a clover. And again, I can count by ones because there's three, one, two, three. And then I can make a guess of how many clover leaves are here. Or I can start to count by three and maybe look at one section and start to count by three. I wonder if that's a way that people who plant gardens figure out what plants can fit in those areas. Do they use their math skills to figure out the size of things and how many they can plant in one area? Math is everywhere, even outside in my sit spot. I love it. But again, I go back to my notebook because I want to record this. So I like to draw a lot of pictures. So I'm really making a point to draw my different shades of green and to draw the different shapes because the leaves up here, they're pointed. I'm seeing points. And the leaves down here, they're curved, they're round. So I wanna draw the difference. And again, it makes me wonder are leaves that are on the ground a shape? And is it different than leaves I see on trees? Is there a reason why they're different? Makes me have to keep going outside. And that's your job. Your job is to every day find your sit spot. Record it in your notebook. And we would really love to see your amazing thinking. So you have lots of ways that you can share your thinking share your sketches, ske share your thoughts. And when you're doing that, just remember that you're going to every day go outside and you're going to explore. You're going to have fun. And while you're doing that, make sure that you are safe. Take care. See you next time. What do you wonder about the squirrel's environment? What do you wonder about how the squirrels move? What do you wonder about how the squirrels interact over the food? What do you wonder about the squirrel's outside environment? What else do you wonder about the squirrel?